let's talk through the blind smartphone camera test 2022. Mm -hmm. We did it science style this year, which I think was a super fun project. Shout out to the Discord for helping us test this stuff. Yeah. Shout out to Zach for helping us build this stuff. What we did this time was we had an entire site built. So instead of doing social media polls of 16 different phones and like it's kind of up to whatever matchups we load up and maybe this like people suggested maybe do double elimination, maybe make it a little more yeah. scientific because like something could happen on the Seating first picture. and stuff, but it's it's hard to do all of that. That is tough. So we, we did full science mode. We took 16 different smartphones. Mm -hmm. We took the same picture with all 16. We fed them into a site which would randomize and show you matchups of all these combinations of the 16. And then instead, well, so that, first of all, that's like, that's pretty sick. So yeah. we have the side by side of the same picture. We did a standard photo, a portrait photo, and a low light photo. Yes. So you could go through and vote on all three of these categories, and then you would get a winner at the end of your voting. The challenge was 16 phones is a lot of pictures. So if yep. we want you to give like a theoretical fair shot to every single camera, that would be at like at it least like 120 100... votes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we actually, we ended up going with an ELO rating system, mm -hmm. which is the, kind of the same thing you might see in kind of any ranked video game or like table tennis or yeah, anything yeah. like that, where you have an overall ranking where your rating goes up based on the winnings against uh, who you play. So yeah. if you beat a highly ranked thing, that's worth more than if you beat a lowly ranked thing. It's weighted because a lot of the like organizations or games or stuff that use it is like you don't get the exact same amount of matchups. So like in chess or tennis yeah. or even just like video games, it still needs to match you against someone who's played 10 games versus someone who's played 50 games. So you weight everything and then wins and losses are weighted differently. So this means the person that went on voted for five minutes and did 40 matchups mm -hmm. is getting a similar score, but maybe not as specific as a person doing 100 votes. Yeah. So the more votes you do, the more tight and statistically accurate your results will be. Yeah. Um, and that was basically the concept. And so we went through it. I blind tested myself, uh, mm -hmm. which was really fun because now I didn't know which photo was yeah. attached to which picture. So my winners when I blind tested myself were for the standard photo, mm -hmm. Pixel 6a nice. was my winner. For portrait mode and for low light, Pixel 7 was nice. my winner, <laughs> really interestingly. Um, but my God, we got a ton of data out of this. So we, we had yeah. to fight up for like three days or so ended up accumulating well over 20 million votes mm -hmm. from over 600,000 voters. And I don't know that there's a collection of unbiased data like this anywhere else on the internet. It's really, really interesting. Yeah, to well, I want to throw in there too, like you mentioned you didn't know which is what, like you were blind testing it. You knew a little more just because you knew which phones were in it. But right. in order to make sure that people could, couldn't cheat, first of all, it would be really hard to cheat in this because you have to vote so many times that if we didn't take the measures we did you would have to like open each picture go to the x either see the file name or the exif data then vote and i mean like and most people would, were voting you would only be cheating yourself yeah because even if you were to go through and vote 400 times and just make sure you only vote for one phone at the end mm -hmm. there were 20 million votes yeah, yeah. and people were just bam bam i think there was something like a peak of thirty-five thousand votes per minute yep so people were really just bam bam just clicking through Reacting, like. gut reaction, left or right, left or right, and just going through them. And that's how we got so many and pieces of information. Even on top of that, we still took the extra steps and we cleared all EXIF data and labeled everything with letters. That way people don't know what phone it is. Um, yep. It was, I actually didn't see a single person sh with a post that says like, I know this is this phone because you guys left something behind, which I'm very surprised at. Yeah. Um, we definitely... We took a lot of extra time to make sure this did it. We correctly. cropped them off to the same resolution. We compressed them all to the same file size. Yeah. We did a lot. We did a, we a did lot, a lot of things. Um, and I'm super, super happy, like you said, about how it came out. I think it was so much fun. I, I like the fact that it was like you voted quick because you could pixel peep if you wanted to, or you could just very quickly be like, this one looks better. This one looks better. And like you're subconsciously picking the things, the traits in the photo that you like. Mm. And therefore, like, quickly picking them because when you're scrolling through Instagram, very rarely are you zooming all the way in. Exactly. Are you like, yeah. And, and it's cool too, because like people were saying, make sure you tell people to turn off true tone, make sure they're looking at it on a color accurate display. You're, you're not when you're on your phone, true tones probably on yeah. night mode might be on past 10. Like you're looking at these pictures, how you would look at them 95% yeah. of the time. That was the goal. Yeah. Just glanceable photos on the internet. So, 
with all these 16 phones, uh, there are various ways that I could determine a winner, but also way more interesting things that we could determine. So I want to get through all of them. Yeah. First of all, the winner. I determine the winner by the one with the highest average ELO rating across all three categories. Mm -hmm. So a high ELO rating for standard and for low light and for portrait, yep. highest average. That winner was the Pixel 6a. It won the entire test against all their flagships, against the Pixel 7, its, yeah. its bigger brother, but also against the Huawei Mate 50 Pro, the iPhone 14 Pro, against the, well, the, the $1600, Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV, yeah. the Galaxy S22 Ultra, uh, the Vivo X80 Pro Plus that we use. There's, there are a lot of heavy hitters in here, mm -hmm. and the 6a, which is incredible, because do you remember what won the blind smartphone camera test last year? I do. The Pixel 5a. So this is not a fluke now. We have millions of votes, no, and people really like the photos across the board out of the 6a. Yeah. I do also want to give honorable mention, and some people might consider this the winner, but the reason we didn't go with total overall winning votes was because w through when we were looking at our votes, because standard was the first category, and potentially because it might be people's favorite categories, but we don't know that, it got about three times as many votes versus low light and portrait. So I think it was like 12 million votes in standard, 4 million low light, 4 million portrait. Mm -hmm. Total amount of wins, the Oppo Find X5 won. Yes. If you consider yourself somebody, and I don't think this is an unreasonable thing to say, somebody who finds just regular standard pictures way more important than portrait mode and low light mode, Mm -hmm. the Oppo Find X5 may be the yeah. winner of this. So the Oppo Find X5 Pro had the strongest ELO in standard photos. Yes. And it had a solid 100,000 more votes than second place Pixel 7 and third place Pixel 6a. Mm -hmm. So if you just care about standard photos, Oppo Find X5 Pro was up there. But guess what? That was second to last in portrait mode. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it happened. It was real far down in portrait mm -hmm. mode. So the pixels were very consistent and the Oppo had the strongest ELO. The biggest win though was in portrait mode, the Pixel 7 Pro demolished. Yeah. It was by far the strongest ELO. Um, it had w it had way more wins than second place, which was the Pixel 6a again. Yeah. Um, sneaky third place, Realme 10 Pro Plus in portrait mode. Realme 10 Pro Plus might be the dark horse winner of this whole thing because while it didn't place top Oh no, it did place top three there, I guess, but like it didn't, it was probably like sixth overall in total votes or something. But when you look at, uh, like we did a little math of votes per dollar overall, and yeah. while Pixel 6a won, Realme was right there. And both of them in terms of how many times they won for how much they cost were just far, far ahead of everything else, which yeah. everything else was flagship. So like, yeah. To, yeah, the fact that so many people blindly voted and really found the Realme 10 Pro Plus photos universally better than iPhone photos across the board yeah. is really interesting. Um, and yeah, as far as how many dollars you're spending on these phones, that's a much less expensive phone than most of the others. Yeah, and, and it's the cheapest phone we use in this entire test. I think so. There is the nothing phone, which did terribly in most of these categories, um, yeah. which is still a little more expensive, but there were a couple other like mid-range budget options, but the Realme did fantastic. I was not yeah. expecting that. My biggest surprises. I'm going to go with my biggest surprises across the board. Okay. Number one was that the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV in auto mode just couldn't pull any wins. It yeah, just got, it just lost to everything. Mm. Um, number two is that the iPhone 14 Pro was kind of middle of the pack. It was yeah. fine. Nobody really, it didn't come at the top. I think it was sixth, 10th, and fifth in the three okay. different categories. So it didn't really lose it's at all low light or was win at all. Tough, yeah, yeah low light was okay. Um, so that was interesting. And... Another fun one, which is uh, the Vivo X80 Pro Plus just dominated low light, but the biggest overall individual matchup dominance, mm -hmm. right? Because they all people saw all kinds of matchups, A versus B, C versus F. The biggest overall matchup dominance, the biggest dunk, I would say, <laughs> the biggest dunk yeah. was the Pixel 7 Pro over the Sony Xperia Mark IV in portrait mode, mm -hmm. in which it was a 98% it was rough. in favor of the Pixel. Um, only 1,500 people out of like several tens of thousands yeah. voted for the Sony. That, that, was, that was an accident. And I don't know what they saw in that Sony photo because it wasn't close. I do want to say, to be like, we the reason you said Sony in auto mode is because Sony clearly can take some crazy pictures in manual mode. And that yeah. seems to be more what it's for, like more quote unquote pro mobile photography. Exactly. We did force bokeh mode, which they called, they don't call it portrait mode. 
I think it would have taken, and I actually think for a lot of these phones, a regular photo in the correct distance tapping on a face would probably give a better depth of feel and roll off than these portrait modes. Yeah. I think we're getting closer and closer to just seeing portrait mode kind of fade away because interesting. I think most of these phones would take a better quote portrait picture in standard mode. It's funny, portrait mode kind of feels like a like a cultural feature. One hundred. Like it sort of comes up and goes away in the in the zeitgeist. Like people just use portrait mode a lot sometimes, and then it just kind of mm-hmm. goes away for a while. And I know I feel like I know people who will like go on a hike with their friends, and they'll just flip to portrait mode and take everything in portrait mode. I don't know. It's just a thing that just happens sometimes that yeah. I've noticed. Um, but yeah, you know, you can you can weight that super low and just like take that out of the test completely and just look at the other results. So, but we have yeah. all the numbers. And there's just so many, so much, so much data. I think my, <laughs> we all know Asus phones have done pretty well in these tests before, and they did all right here. I think the Zen phone may have been third in l- portrait. No, 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 no. In portrait, Zen phone was, like was fourth. It is seventh. Uh, the Zen phone was sixth in low light. Okay. And the Zen phone was fourth in standard. Okay. It might have been third overall. Oh, I think it was third overall in average ELO. Average ELO, it is right behind the pixels okay. in third place. The yeah. Zen phone and ROG phone six, uh, portrait cutout, I thought was immaculate. It was like, I think it was right there with the S22 Ultra. Yeah, the problem say. one is the S22 Ultra blurred the background more, which made, while the cutout was perfect, you know how in Photoshop, if you perfectly nail a cutout, but if it's on a very contrasted background, it feels like a you sticker f- on like yeah, a... Yeah, I, if you feather the edge in the wrong direction, it kind of, it looks like it's like melting a little bit. It, it just feels like it's cut out artificially whereas sure. the zen phone just like rolled off the background a little less intense and felt more blended in like a real yeah. photo where the s22 ultra it also didn't nail like exposure and stuff so it, it had a good cutout but it felt fake and mm-hmm. just wasn't a great picture but the it zen did. phone nailed it it's yeah. one of the best cutouts i've ever seen and your hair is not easy to cut out yeah all these had a challenge with my hair and with the the not a flamethrower that i'm holding yeah um the iphone se i also want to point out does not have night mode and it is the only phone on our list that does not have night mode. And we'll chalk that up to Apple's fault and that it still should be in there because it's, night mode in this phone. it's going against phones that are cheaper than it in some cases and have night mode. And ones that did well in night mode too. Yeah, so it got dominated in the low light mm-hmm. uh, because it doesn't have night mode, but it does have a nice sensor with OIS, with a wide aperture, with a new processor. It, Why doesn't it have night no mode? There's no reason, yeah. So that's, it just got crushed in that, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's you know those are kind of the highlights. I feel like we we now know a lot more about the unbiased nature of people voting on cameras. There's there's many more observations in the full video, which mm-hmm. is like if you put all of the 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 pictures in a row next to each other in order from least votes to most votes. Remember what we said about you know brighter photo typically yes, wins. I love this. You would yeah. expect to see like a gradient of like dark to light. Mm-hmm. What we actually found was the best photos were a correct exposure at the top yeah the worst photos were the darkest ones on the other side and then in the middle were the two bright photos so you can actually be too bright and yeah, lose out sure. to the correct exposure and that happened in pretty much all the categories in every single which category. Was really interesting yeah it's not an absolute which is like the previous brackets that we've done a lot of people are just like the brightest and most saturated is going to win and it's like in in the case of a good photo or even in the case of a bad photo yes but like, but you can't you, just crank it all. You the way can up. overdo it, and this really showed. If you are going, to, if you are a camera company out there, maybe a low budget one, you're gonna have a crappy camera. Go bright and go would, saturated. It's a good way to not come in last place. A bad camera, it looks nicer when it's brighter. Yeah, the Moto Edge is a good example of if it's dark, it will just lose. Yeah, it's just gonna lose all of its matchups. And so like the the super bright like Samsung, I think tends now to be a little bit overexposed more often. Yeah, and I think I noticed that in the review, but like it's very clear now when you see them in that lineup. It's like it gets to the brightest ones, and then it's the Samsung, and then it's the good exposures over mm-hmm. the Samsung. So Samsung did brighten everything, but it didn't win because of it. So that was interesting to note. Um, yeah, the. The night mode had some of the craziest photos. Okay, I, I want to like and kind of go on that. Um, just something uh, I saw a lot of comments, and I have a couple just like pieces of feedback that I saw that I just want to talk about because the reason we made this test this year is because of feedback we got in previous years, and it just finally came to the like we're like we want to do this different. 
as we were talking about it, Zach actually reached out to us early this year and we started talking with him and he had a really, he's pretty much one of the people who was like, I think you could do this in a cooler way, in a more scientific way. And mm -hmm. again, shout out to him, but let's just go over some of the feedback. And the first one is, I think people thought some of the pictures we took were very easy, but we were very specific on photos we took and they are hard. Every single one of these pictures is a hard picture to take. Okay, yeah, I'll go over that. So every picture we take for these tests intentionally has a bunch of different variables because we don't want one of them to win just because it does one thing exactly, well, yeah. right? So if I just take a picture of me in front of a blank white wall, what you will learn is which one takes a picture of me the best, yeah. and you can vote on that. And that's cool, but what if the subjects you take pictures of don't all look like me? So, and then you add, what about if dynamic range was really bad on one of these phones? You would never know that if it's just me in front of a blank white yep. wall. So the, the bottom line was add as many, not variables, but as many facets for it to do well or poorly mm -hmm. as possible so that when people vote, they can just vote on whichever one they instinctively think is better without thinking too hard. Yeah. So it's me and Adam in front of a window with a deep background, depth of field, with lights overhead. So you're getting dynamic range, multiple skin tones, mm -hmm. sharpness of a subject, overall focal length, drop off of like how shallow the depth of field is with a normal photo, all of this stuff in one picture. I had to change my shirt so we had different yep. colors. We yeah. had a blue shirt on and I had a red <laughs> shirt. Blue exactly. Red. Yours is a knitted sweater. And like one thing we really noticed is when uh, phones weren't doing great with exposure, one of the problems was the blacks and the the uh, collar of your sweater yeah. had a lot of stitch marks and in good exposed ones, you could see every single line. And if you look down the list, it just looked like a straight black collar. The, the bottom three or four, you could not see any At detail all. on the black yeah. collar. Yeah, that was a specific note that we'd noticed because of the sweater I was yep. wearing, but then also you'd see that more in the hair and then you'd see that the windows look different. Mm -hmm. It all kind of tied together. So that's all very intentional. Very, very, yeah. The low light photo, Again, you can you can take a low light photo anywhere. What we did this time was a softly subject lit low light photo in front of a nighttime nightscape that is far away. Mm -hmm. So what you have now is you have me, which is just like, can it get the subject in focus? Almost all of them did. <laughs> they did a pretty good job. I, I would argue that. like half of them missed you in focus. A couple of them, I think only one of them truly missed focus, which was a Samsung, but a lot of them slightly missed or would have just a little bit of motion. motion okay, blur, I guess that's what I was talking about. Which kind of looks the same because it feels like you missed it. Yeah. So that was number one, which is like these are all going to be longer exposures, and you mm -hmm. hit that button, and that's that's one of the variables is how well can they isolate hand movement. It'll have a subject in focus. It's going to have to do. A, it's going to have to make a decision about exposure. So does yeah. it want that dark dark background to be bright or not? And if it did, you would see it brighten everything in the foreground too. It would brighten the floor that yeah. was right behind me. So it had to make an exposure decision and then it had to make like a, it's just a depth of field thing, which is like some of them have a bigger sensor and the the skyline behind me and the moon right above my head mm -hmm. would either be a little bit more blurred or a little bit more flared or something like that. So all of this stuff was noticeable in just that one low light photo. Yeah. And then lastly, the portrait mode photo. This is again a tough one because there are a lot of variables with portrait mode photos from the focal length they decide to use, 1x, 1.5x, 2x, 3x, um, to the amount that they blur the background, mm -hmm. to how good the cutouts are, to how good the rest of the photo is. So we again, I had that sweater on, yep. and you had me as a subject. You also have me with a wall on one side with a close-up background, and the rest of the studio on the other side with a faraway background. So you can mm -hmm. sort of judge the fall off of the amount of blur. You also have me holding an object that is not a, a human. So you have the face cut out mm -hmm. with the hair, but you also have a non-human cut out with the not a flamethrower. And the flamethrower had a like hole in it as well. So you can see the if it decided test. to like, yeah, include exactly include the piece that yeah. is clearly the wall that should be blurred, but is not because yeah. it might think it's part of the object. They all did different levels of good yeah. at that. So there's a lot of data other than just like me and how mm -hmm. well you cut me out. So we we did a lot of thinking about like how to yeah. do all of these tests with one photo. Because what we didn't want to do is have you do three portrait mode tests yeah. and three low light tests. Exactly. So that was our And we didn't want to be like, we know every single person is going to vote because the cutout is good in this, or we know everyone's going to vote because like the skin tones in this are good. You like photos for different reasons, and that's part of what we tried to figure out when we saw all of these. Because when we were looking at portrait mode, it was like, all right, cutouts seem to be super important here. And like the the focal length of things 
didn't seem like that much of an issue or and just we can look through that and then see like oh the top three things had this in common and the bottom three things had this in common and then yeah we can kind of that's guess how you why people yeah from the patterns yeah so yeah i would say check out the video it has all of the summarized thoughts and organized versions of these conversations as we yeah. get into the weeds uh, i also want to give another shout out to zach who like built this system that helped us like serve these different matchups to you it turned out that across the board it did a really good job of evenly showing you a random series yeah. of matchups the total votes for the phones across the board are all pretty much 2.7 million the absolute mm -hmm. minimum that any phone got was 2,737,148 votes. And the absolute maximum that any phone got was 2,742,474 votes. Yeah, that, really good. that was something I saw a couple people worried that, I think people were taking the personal test and seeing like, phone b got 17 chances and then like one of the other phones only got six and they thought well b had more chances to get wins and maybe in your personalized results like there might be a little more if you didn't vote that many times it's a little less quote-unquote scientific but when it comes to the full data set that we got th it, that was within five thousand votes and e the average was 2.7 million so like yeah crazy 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 close in terms of evenness of votes across it i don't think any phone got an unfair advantage at yeah. all yeah so we got really accurate elo scores from that mm -hmm. which is sweet so uh shout out to the pixel 6a people's choice yeah winner for, i'm gonna uh, keep saying oppo find x5 also did fantastically it did and pixel 7 yeah and the shout out to the roomy 10 pro plus bang for the buck winner yeah alongside the pixel 6a good stuff if people still want to take the test also we're going to leave the site up for yeah. personalized results we're not collecting data anymore because it's a lot of data it's a lot. for people who were wondering why we compressed in the first four hours it was two terabytes of bandwidth um just for people voting so like yeah, i mean that's a lot of smarts but also a lot of data <laughs> <laughs> that's um, <laughs> that was like, so yeah, that's why we can, but you can still get your personalized results. I do think we're going to make a switch so it won't show letters anymore. You can just straight up see, so you don't have to reference the video, yeah, but take we, the test, take the test. It's see a lot of got. fun. Um, and like the test doesn't mean I like take it with a grain of salt. Look at it. Look down the list. Your number four on the list could still be the perfect phone for you. That doesn't yeah. use it as a reference. It's yeah. great. These are always fun. There's more things to a smartphone than the camera, but it, always, exactly. it is yeah, always that's fun because like you, you will go into this with an expectation of what you think will win, and you will very likely be surprised it's... by where that expectation shows up on the list. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. We appreciate you for sticking around during the holidays. Happy holidays. And you know what? On, on that note, mm -hmm. if you are uh, hanging out with the family during the holidays, this has never been a better opportunity to steal all of their phones, open the YouTube app, and subscribe to Waveform on their phones. Exactly. When else are you going to get grandma to subscribe to Waveform? I promise you it's worth it. You just tell them you're upgrading their RAM or something She's like going to start getting notifications. It's going to be a good time. So yeah, we'll just wait here while you do yeah. that. See y'all in 2023. It might even be 2023 for someone watching this. Isn't that, that is. weird? Yeah. What up? How does it feel in the future? Are we still around? <laughs> Can you still subscribe in the future?